Now let's continue where we left off in the last episode. In the last episode we created a custom endpoint for displaying our products. And in this episode I want to show you how you can pass arguments to that endpoint and using those arguments filter your products. So for example in this episode we are going to be filtering our products by price. And that can be, well, show me the products that have a price of let's say 20. Not very useful, but you can do that. Uh, what is going to be more useful is, let's say we want to display the products that have a price more than 20 or less than 100 or even a price between 20 and 100, right? So that is what we are going to be doing in this episode. Right now if we go to WPJs and WLV1 products, we are just getting the list of products. Of course, this is somewhat useful but we want to integrate filtering into this to do that first of all we need to learn how to pass arguments uh, to our endpoint so what you can do is you can do something like a question mark price is equal to 20 and that's about it you do this uh, this endpoint still works but of course nothing is happening at the back end so this is currently of not much use to us but if we go to our code and now right here we can access that parameter so for example i'm going to say price is going to be equal to params and get param and we are expecting the param called price okay of course you need to pass params right here you can call this params request whatever you like i'm just going to call it params and now we can just return the price just to see what we are getting from this line of code of course once you do return everything below this is not going to run okay save this go to the browser check it out and as you can see we just get 20 so the price is 20 great okay so now we know how to pass arguments into our custom endpoint now we need to use those arguments in some way so first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to go right here and instead of just doing params get param i'm actually going to json decode this because we will need that at a later point so let's just do it now so we just json uh, decode this save it and uh, take a look at this so currently it says uh, quotation marks 20 quotation marks because this is a string by default but if i refresh it i just get 20. this means that this is a number and of course since we are going to be filtering prices in this episode we need to get the numbers not strings so that we can compare them to something right okay so now we know this let's now do some changes in our code right here so as i said in the previous episode uh, you can use whatever wordpress can give you inside of your themes or inside of your plugins you can use in your custom endpoints now this is not going to work for us because with using get post function uh, we can't do much comparing filtering searching and so on so what we are going to do we are going to replace this function uh, with new wp query because uh, wp query is actually going to allow us to do a lot of stuff with data that you get from wordpress and also i have a series whole series about wp query so i urge you to actually check that out and of course check the documentation especially this part right here with custom fields because we are going to be filtering custom fields so just search for wp query and go through this documentation it has a lot of examples in it okay so how do we refactor this code well first of all i'm just going to do new new wp query and i'm going to pass it some arguments uh, instead of number of posts so these are our arguments instead of number of posts uh, we are just going to say uh, posts per page and actually that's about it uh, we just need to change something right here and i will show you why so if we return posts right here so i'm going to delete this this return and i'm going to return posts okay so if we save it uh, go to our browser 
refresh it. And as you can see, now we are getting a different type of deal than we were getting with get post functions. As you can see, we have a query right here. We have query variables and meta queries, and then we have posts. So to access those posts, so that this would work as expected for us, uh, you just do posts, posts, because we wanna access that posts array in posts object. Okay, save this, uh, remove, return posts, save it, check it out, refresh it. And as you can see, we are still getting all of the posts that we need, but now we are using a WP query instead of get posts function. Okay, so now before we get into the actual filtering, uh, let's just do one more change because if we take a look at our response, uh, we can see that the price is currently a string. So we can't compare strings and numbers, right? So we need to fix this and this is going to be a very easy fix. So all you have to do is you got, you got to wrap this round inside of int val like this, right? So this is going to convert your string into a number. And if I save this, check it out now in the browser, as you can see now it's this reddish color and it just says five without the quotation marks. Okay, great. So now we have our prices set up. So let me just show you how this works, right? So <clears throat> let's say for example, that we wanna display all of the posts that have a price of 20. How do we do that? Well, of course you would check the WP query documentation or you would check my videos, my series about WP query. Uh, but essentially what you do is something like this, right? You do meta query and in that meta query you say something like this. So the key for our meta query is going to be price. This is the ACF price field. The value of that field is going to be 20. So you wanna add that va value so that you can compare with it, right? So the value is going to be 20. Uh, don't uh, forget to add this. So this is very important. So just add type is equal to numeric and the compare method is going to be equals to, right? So we wanna list all the posts uh, or all of the products that have price of 20. If we save this, go to the browser, refresh it, we are not going to get anything. And this is because we don't have any products with a price of exactly 20, right? So what we can do is we can change the price. We are just hard coding this, right? So I'm going, I'm going to change the price to five because I know I have a product with a price of five. Okay refresh it and now I will get this product. But of course you can do something like this. So let's say that we wanna display all of the posts that have a price larger than 20. Then you would just do this, right? Uh, greater than 20. Save it, go to the browser, check it out. And as you can see, all of those prices are higher than 20 or you can do something like show me all of the prices that are less than 100. So you would of course uh, change this, save it, go to the browser, and now we have five and 34. These are all the prices that are less than 100. Great. So now we hard coded this. Now we know the method of how we can filter our prices, our products by price. So let's do that using these arguments that we are getting from our URL. Now, of course, it's pretty easy uh, to do this if you are only receiving one number. But uh, as I said at the beginning of this episode, what we wanna do is we wanna allow I think uh, three variations of this. So when somebody adds just a number, then we will just show the products with that exact price, of course. Now, uh, the more complicated, complicated thing to do is what if we wanna show the price that is between two numbers? So uh, it has greater than 20 and less than 100, for example. How are we going to write that? Well, pretty easily we can go to our browser and add as a price, we are going to add this object right here and I'm going to say LT. So less than is going to be 20 and uh, 
actually less than or greater than greater than is going to be 20 and less than LT is going to be for example 300 okay so this is how you would write that parameter and now of course if you are using something like next.js react view whatever you would just access this endpoint and send uh, something like this to that endpoint now we need to learn how we can take this data and actually display it uh, on our custom on our custom endpoint so we need to calculate this data right so i'm just going to leave this like this for now so the price is going to be greater than 20 and less than 300. so we actually used this json decode because of that type of url that we are using so that we can decode this data for for example so if we check that out how that looks we can just go return price and now if I refresh it, you get this object with GT and LT in it. So you can use this 20 and you can use this 300 in some ways. Uh, how are we going to do that, you ask? So first of all, I'm just going to create a function. I'm going to call it query argument. And I'm going to pass in a param and I'm going to pass in a key. So the key is going to be... Uh, our price so this is always just going to be a price but i added it because maybe you want to extend this function to work with something like delivery for example so then your key right here would be delivery so first of all uh, we just want to cover the case that we currently have and that is just displaying the products so how do we do that well i'm just going to say return null right here and this is because right here I'm going to remove all of this and instead of that meta query, I'm just going to say query argument and we are going to pass a price and our key is going to be price. So our variable price and our key is going to be called price. Okay, so now uh, if we save this, go to our browser, refresh this. Okay, I need to re uh, remove this return. Save it, check it. Now we are just getting the products great and this still works we are not getting any errors okay so next thing we need to do we need to cover a case uh, where we just pass in a number right so we just wanna filter the prices by let's say for example number five so uh, I'm going to do something like this right here put it in an if conditional so if so if we are getting any type of param, so that, that uh, param is this right here. So if we are passing a parameter to our function, then just return this to me. So we are going to return an array. Uh, inside that array is another array. The key is the key that we are defining right here. The value is the param. So remember uh, what we did at the beginning, uh, so if I just write a number right here, then my param is just going to be, for example, 20 or for example, 5 or whatever. Uh, the value is going to be just the param and then the numeric. So if I save this, we should get some functionality going. Of course, if I refresh it, nothing is happening. But if I do something like 5, save it. Nope, nope, not save it, refresh it or actually just do five and enter, right? We are getting uh, the product with a price of five. If I do 34, we are getting the product with the price of 34. Great. Now we need to handle those other cases. So the first case that we wanna handle, first of all, we wanna check what we are getting right here. So first of all, we wanna check if we are getting an object. Then if we are getting that object, what we wanna do is we wanna check if we are getting both greater than and less than. So let's do that now. So I'm going to first of all check if I'm getting an object. If I'm not getting an object, then this will run. And if we don't even have any parameters, then we are just going to return null, null and that is going to just list our products. Okay, so here we first check object. 
So we say is object param. So if we are getting an object, then we need to do some more uh, conditional logic. And first of all, we are going to check, uh, do we have params for uh, less than and params for greater than? How do we check that? Well, like this, right? So if the parameters, uh, if we have both parameters, less than and greater than, then we want to create our meta query like this. So we are just going to return. This is very important, right? You want to return this because if this condition passes, it's just going to return this and none of the code below this are going to be applied or it's uh, there is just not going to run, right? Because this condition is currently true. So of course we are passing in the key. Now the values, so because we are using compare between so we want to compare between two numbers. We want to compare between greater than and less than. So, and that is going to, uh, the result of that is going to be uh, the number. So this can be, for example, 100 and 500. And what you are saying right here, find me all the prices uh, that have a value between 100 and 500. Okay, save it. And now if we go here, we already have this uh, GT20 and LT300. If I refresh this page, now we are getting 209 and 34. So we are getting all the prices between 20 and 300. If I do 100 and 300, then I will just get this one. And if I do 100 to 900, then I will get all of these prices, right? Also, I can do something like 500 and so on, right? So 309, 209, 460. So you can see how this works. Now, all we have to do is just uh, cover the cases where we have uh, only the less than parameter and only the greater than parameter. And this is very similar to this because this was actually the hardest scenario to cover. So let me just paste this in. So for less than it will just be if, so if you have parameter less than, then the key is going to be key, parameter less than is going to be our number and you just need to watch out for this compare. So this is going to be less than the number that you entered. And of course, the same thing is true for the greater than. So you do GT right here. Uh, we change this and we also change this to be GT. And that's about it. We are done, I think. We don't need to do anything more. If I save it, now our custom endpoint works like this. So we already covered the case for between two numbers. So let's just say that I want to display all of the prices that are larger than 100. So if I press enter to this, then I'm going to go, uh, all of my prices are going to be larger than 100. If I do less than 50, for example, now I'm going to get five and 34. If I do greater than 200, or 500, let's say, then I'm going to get these prices and so on. As you can see, this is not that hard if you're not know what you're doing. And also if you understand how WP query works. And as I said, with WP query, you can do a lot of, lot of stuff. Check out the documentation. The documentation for WP query is huge, which is not surprising because with WP query, you can pretty much query anything from your database and filter all of the data that you need. So you would usually for your custom endpoints use WP query instead of only just uh, get posts, right? Because get posts are not going to give you any of the functionality that WP query gives you. Okay, so this has been it for this episode. Everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.